The Last Journey of U-486, A World War II U-Boat's Fate, December 1943, Kiel Harbor. Amidst the clanging of hammers and the groaning of cranes, a new submarine slides into the cold waters. Its name is simple, U-486. But to those who knew, this vessel represented a desperate new hope in Germany's fading battle for the Atlantic. At first glance, U-486 looked like just another Type 6 IC U-boat, the most common model prowling the Atlantic. 67 meters long, 769 tons surface displacement, capable of 17 knots on the surface and 7.6 knots submerged. Its range, nearly 8,500 nautical miles. Its weaponry, standard 533 millimeter torpedo tubes and a deck gun for anti-aircraft defense. But beneath its steel skin, U-486 carried a secret that changed everything. She was one of the first U-boats coated with a top secret rubber-based material codenamed Alberic, after the mythical dwarf sorcerer from Germanic legend. This multi-layered coating, about four millimeters thick, was designed to absorb and scatter sonar waves, rendering the submarine nearly invisible to Allied detection systems. Tests showed that Alberic reduced sonar effectiveness by more than 40 percent. At a time when German U-boats were being hunted down mercilessly, this innovation offered a slim but crucial chance for survival. Yet the technology came with its own challenges. The rubber coating slightly reduced the submarine's speed beast by about half a knot. It required flawless installation. If the tiles loosened under pressure, it could compromise stealth. Still, the risk was worth it. U-486 was placed under the command of Captain Leutnant Gerhard Meyer, a 30-year-old officer known for his icy calm and technical expertise. Meyer had served aboard multiple U-boats before earning his own command. His peers described him as reserved, highly disciplined, and tactically sharp the ideal leader for such a groundbreaking vessel. In December 1944, after quick training and sea trials in the Baltic, U-486 received her first combat orders to disrupt Allied shipping in the English Channel and North Atlantic. The environment was brutal. Allied aircraft carriers provided 24-hour air coverage. Escort destroyers were equipped with cutting-edge A, S, D, I, C sonar systems. Magnetic mines and radar beacons were now deployed along major routes, but U-486 had something none of her enemies expected, acoustic invisibility. Her first strike was devastating. On December 31, 1944, U-486 targeted the Belgian troop ship SS Leopoldville, carrying nearly 2,200 American soldiers of the 66th Infantry Division to reinforce the Western Front. Under cover of darkness, U-486 fired multiple T-5 Zaunkönig acoustic torpedoes, homing in on the noise of the ship's propellers. The impact was catastrophic. Leopoldville took a fatal hit to her stern and began sinking rapidly in the freezing waters of the channel. More than 763 American soldiers died, many from hypothermia as they waited for rescue that came too late. The sinking of Leopoldville remains one of the greatest Allied naval disasters in the European theater. But U-486 wasn't finished. In the following days, she attacked and heavily damaged the British destroyer HMS Affleck and the Corvette at HMS Capel. Affleck survived, but Capel was lost. By the winter of 1944, the average U-boat survival time in the Atlantic had dropped to mere weeks. Against that backdrop, U-486's early victories seemed almost miraculous. A small, silent hunter prowled the depths, unseen, untouchable, and deadly. But even a phantom at sea cannot remain hidden forever. By early 1945, Allied command began to notice a disturbing pattern, reports of attacks by a submarine that seemed unusually difficult to detect. With her orders complete, U-486 set course for Bergen, Norway, one of the few remaining secure bases of the Kriegsmarine. Unbeknownst to her crew, a new threat waited beneath the waves. Patrolling the approaches to Bergen was the British submarine HMS Tapir, a modern vessel equipped with upgraded sonar, radar, and high-speed torpedoes. On April 8, 1945, at around 11 a.m., Tapir's sonar operators detected a faint persistent contact. Silently maneuvering into attack position, Tapir launched a spread of torpedoes. U-486 had no chance to react. 
At least one torpedo struck midship. There were no survivors. All 48 crew members, including Captain Lieutenant Meyer, perished with their vessel. No distress call, no debris field, just an oily slick spreading across the surface of the North Sea. What went wrong? Some historians believe U-486 was cruising on the surface, counting on her stealth to avoid detection. Others suggest that by early 1945, Allied sonar technology had advanced enough to pierce even the Alberic coating at close range. Rare facts. The wreck of U-486 was only discovered in 2013 by Norwegian researchers resting about 55 kilometers west of Bergen at a depth of 250 meters. Examination showed clear torpedo damage amidships consistent with an ambush from a nearby submarine. Technical legacy of U-486, the Alberic experiments laid the groundwork for future stealth technologies influencing both Soviet and American submarine designs during the Cold War. The concept of sound-absorbing hull coatings would become standard for modern nuclear submarines. Historical significance. U-486 became one of the last German U-boats to inflict major Allied losses before Germany's surrender. Her attacks and her eventual destruction symbolized the twilight of Germany's once formidable U-boat fleet. Quietly, without ceremony, U-486 and the promise of a stealth revolution vanished into the cold depths. But one question remains. If Germany had widely deployed acoustic stealth technology in 1943, could the Battle of the Atlantic have taken a different course? Share your thoughts in the comments. Your voice matters. Because history is shaped not only by what happened, but by what might have been.